Hi, hello everyone. I'm John Kaku from Tokyo, Japan. Well, I have been using motion appliance for maybe about six years or maybe seven years. I try to use this appliance step by step. Now I have been using some of the very crazy cases. So this is one of recent Finnish case. I maybe didn't use five years ago. Uh, this is adult, 45 years old male, an open bite and class three tendency from uh, several metric measurements. You can see this is pretty much big negative with analysis. And this is a panoramic X-ray. If I look at this case from frontal view, now you see the cross bite. The maxillary arch is a very narrow, so we need to correct that. And also we look at soft tissue recessions of the lower fast motors, which is very difficult even without orthodontics. This is a hopeless tooth. In the future, this has to be uh, maybe extracted. Then we look at canine relationship is five to eight millimeter class three. So how you want to correct close bite gum recessions and then class three, five to eight millimeter and adult 45 years old male. First of all, the gum recessions. Well, I, I need to ask my colleagues, the periodontist, to, to do something. Well, the first approach, we want to look at the arch, then we want to distalize the entire arch. If we do so without any expansion of the upper, we automatically coordinate the transverse because more distalizations, if you go, the narrower part of the arch is going, then facing to maxillary arch, so the coordination is better. So this we call relative expansion, so relatively, relative constrictions, whatever, the coordinator transverse. If necessary, during these distalizations, we may need expansion with mini screw assisted RPE, or we correct class three relationship with carrier motions. At the end, we may need it, we may need a task to finalize the case. So at the beginning, I place the motions on the lower, and then we put the brackets on and start the class three elastics to establish class one, because this is a very severe open bite. We use this mechanics for six months. The canine is almost sagittary class one. They are vertically still open by. And you can see some of the canine extrusions. This may need some of the extrusion to close the open bite. But I felt this canine extrusion is enough to correct the open bite. So now I remove the motion out and put the brackets on, and then change the mechanics to retract entire lower arch with a mini screw mechanics. Now the mini screw and the arch wire the distalizations. Well, we still see some of the motor constrictions. I use mini screw assisted RPE was going on to coordinate transverse dimensions, and then Transverse coordinated, then I think it's, it's a good transverse relationship. Now we finalize the case, up and down elastic on the canine and the premotors. The 23 months later, we completed this mechanics and finish. So at the beginning of the treatment, this is a very severe open bite and cross threes. It's a very difficult 
without extracting, without surgery, but the combination mechanics, motion, and mini screw assisted RPE and the mini screw enable us to complete without extracting teeth. So you look at the uh, quick time movie, this is a before treatment, this is a negative object, and we digitalize lower arch and develop the maxillary arch with a mini screw assisted expansion appliance and then complete it. So to me, this is kind of case I never thought about motion appliance can correct, but now we could save surgery, we could save extractions. Now I am a clinical speaker for Align Technologies. I have many cases treated combinations with Invisalign and also motion appliance. I want to show you some of the advantages you combine together. Well, conventional orthodontics, the wire orthodontics, may be crowding, big, severe overjet, overbite. Extraction cases are easy to manage, but no extraction treatment by aligner is relatively easier if there is not much severe AP corrections. But what are you gonna do if the patient has severe overjet? So this is a video from AAO, My Smile, My, my Life, My Smile, My Orthodontics Campaign. So this campaign, My Life, My Smile, also done this campaign, from 1994 to 2010, uh, according to AAO, adult cases increased 5%. Uh, today, many of the adult cases are treated by Invisalign, but very few percentage of the children are treated by Invisalign. And class two corrections, class three corrections, corrected by Invisalign is much less than class one cases. So now I want to show you, I think it's advantage, we have 10 advantages, but time is limited now. I just show you those two parts of advantages. Well, we try to digitalize models. When is the best time to achieve molar digitalizations. One study compared without second molar eruptions, group number one. After second molar eruptions, the group number two. Group number one without the second molar eruptions, you achieve molar digitalizations faster and more, and you have less loss of anchorage of incisors. But after second molar eruptions, it's a slower molar digitalization, and you lose more anchorage loss. Now, we have new features from malign technology uh, uh, saying mandibular advancement features from malign technologies. These features, there is a huge attachment on the side between the second premolars and the molars to bring the jaw one millimeter per month. There are three phases for mandibular advancement features. Pre-mandibular pre, uh, advancement phases, sometimes we create an overjet, some of the alignment phases. Then the next step is mandibular advancement. It's usually one millimeter per month. After mandibular advancements are completed, then finishing phase. But the problem is, if the patient loosening the primary motors, mandibular advancement phase stop, and then you go alignment phases. 
So the mandible advancement phases need to have permanent second premolar fully erupt because big attachment cannot hold the aligners. To me, the best time to distalize molar is when primary teeth are just gone. You are now the best time to distalize molars. The mandibular advancement features cannot make any advancements while the baby teeth are coming. So the conclusion of the study, before the eruption of the second molars are coming, this is the best time to distalize, but mandibular advancement features, some of the phases, you cannot make it. And this is the case the patients are looking for Invisalign, but you can see this is 12 millimeter overjet and huge overjet with overbite. As you see before the second molar eruption, this is a perfect time to distalize molars. Well, if we want to do sequential staging with aligners, there are certain problems for this particular case for just class two elastic. Well, one of the reasons with a sequential staging with aligner, you want to use class two elastics and then move teeth one by one, but how you grab those teeth, very short clinical crown, aligner cannot grab or hold very precisely. It's impossible for the aligner to control three-dimensional positions. The second problem is that this canine is over-erupted. It's, it's a very deep. So those are the situations we usually go motion appliance on the premolars because we don't want any extrusions during the class two elastics. So four and six is appropriate selections for distalizations. In this particular case, we place motions, first premolar and the motors, and this is the beginning of the distalizations, and we place it class two elastic, we achieve solid class two to class one for four months. Well, if we do the sequential staging, each aligner requires four aligners, our millimeters. So one distalization requires 10 aligners. Let's say this patient was five millimeter class two, so you need about 50 aligners to go. So this become every two weeks is a 25 months. We finish four months of desterilization means that we could save almost 21 months. After four months, we remove the motion out. Then we look at those teeth. We have now longer clinical crown. We can scan the patient's mouth. Aligner can hold the teeth better. So now we are ready for incisor retractions with aligners. And this way, the clinical crown is long enough we can hold the teeth more precise. And this is the beginning, and this is the end of treatment. Well, during the uh, teenagers, some of the problem is the teeth are growing. The extrusion uh, movement is required during the cream check. However, according to the literatures, with aligner, extrusion is a one of the most difficult tooth movement with aligners. If you lost some of the control, poor fitting aligners, you need to cut out some of the aligners and then use button and elastic to extrude them. And growing children, because the teeth are sometimes very high. We need to bring those high canine into solid class one. This particular case, because some, some class two tendency, I put the motions. Five months later, the motion finish. 
you look at the canine positions from the frontal view, from the beginning to the end of the motions, during these motion phases, canine is extruded, extruded into class one positions. This is with aligner. It's not easy to extrude the canine into class one because you lose control vertical positions. So now five months later, we are in class one, and then second premolars is more erupted. We are ready for iter scanning, and then we scan teeth because the teeth are erupted. So we have more precise staging is possible. Addition to that, there is a space in front of the canine, so the aligner can grab interproximal surface. So the aligner staging is much more predictable as well. So now we go clean check, and this is not so difficult to movement. Very easy. It's a class one canine premolar relationship and just need inside the relationship corrections. So the 21 aligners, and this is before and after treatments, we also did some refinement stages. So the total treatment from start to the end was a 17 months. So my conclusion is that very predictable extrusion of the canine can be possible with this motion appliance combinations. This is a textbook from the Damon Technique. Some of the very crowding cases, the Damon Technique advocates, you just put self ligation brackets and very light wires. You have a deep bumper effect, you're not gonna flare the inside the forward. Well, this is a photocopy from the Textbook, this is not my case, this is from the Damon textbook. Case one, very crowded, self ligation bracket with an eye tie wires, this flare inside the forward. Case two, severely crowded, night tie wires, alignments, the inside the flare forward. So each one of those cases, severe crowding and Corrected with a night tie wire, certification brackets. Every single case, lower inside the flare forward. This is also from the literatures. You are looking at AJO. Everybody finding the same. There is no magic brackets can prevent inside the flare in forward. So one of the studies shows like. Uh, average seven to eight degree flaring. How we prevent this happens? I think the key is to make space before leveling alignment. Well, let's look at this case. The case very crowded at the beginning of treatment. If you flare inside the forward, maybe you will show the roots, you expose the tooth out of the soft tissues. But you look at crown inclination measures, we can apply those teeth. If we apply it, we make some rooms. According to the literatures, every degree you apply, you create some room. And according to these formulas, we upright 10 degree, we automatically gain about seven millimeters. So before leveling the teeth, we use motion, make space before alignment. So this is the setup I made, and then I created a space from the motions. So you look at the situations after three months, and see the space between teeth. There is interproximal surface. So now I could go Invisalign, but that time uh, refinement was limited in the past. Today, maybe I may not use these linger brackets. 
but in the past I used this case. Now we have corrections. And then finishing with Invisalign. So the creating the space first, then we use those space to upright. In this case, in these situations, we prevent the flaring of incisors. So this is after 90 stages and then corrected. So we really look at QuickTime movie, very uh, flare, lower incisors. And now we try to create a space from canine to motor first, and then use the space to align with Invisalign. So this is the end result, before and after. And this is a cruiser view on the upper. We actually did the same thing on the motion maxillary arch. And we also did on the lower. During these distalizations, actually not only distalization, but rotation of the motors makes space on the lower arch. And before, and this is after the situations. So we didn't flare lower incisor forward, such like self irrigations and night eye wires. You can compare before and after the frontal view, side view, very thin tissues on incisor area, and we didn't cause any decessions of lower incisors. So my conclusion number 10, if you combine together, we can prevent the flaring of the lower incisors. So I discussed those two parts of 10 reasons combination appliance. I have much more interesting cases. I hope we have Asian Symposium in September, Tokyo. So we, if you like sushi, we have best sushi in Tokyo. You need to come. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kaku.